Today I filmed a kind of beginner's makeup tutorial type thing. So basically I just went into depth on various things like your face, eyebrows, eyes, eyeshadow, everything. I kind of explained what I like to do and what I would recommend for people that are just starting out to wear makeup or if you want to learn more about how to do makeup kind of like how to apply eyeshadow because as you can see this is not like natural you can take give or take any of these things that you learn you can just do whatever you want with this I just kind of wanted to give you guys tips I'm obviously not a professional I'm not like I have no experience in like makeup training professional nothing but this is what I have learned over the years I actually have some questions here that I want to talk about so the first one is why do I wear makeup because I get this a lot in my Q&A's and stuff and I thought I would I'd answer it right now and the reason I wear makeup is because I really like to do it like I enjoy sitting down and spending time looking in the mirror and applying different products and like figuring it out and just I don't know experimenting with different things and I like seeing what makeup can do how it can make my cheekbones look how it can make my eyes look eyebrows all that stuff when did I start wearing makeup I first learned about makeup like the makeup world when I was in fifth grade and my sister actually showed me a video called theme park makeup by Michelle Fawn. A year later in sixth grade I started experimenting with like eyeshadows and lip gloss like kind of you know little girl stuff. I don't know I just have liked makeup for a long time. People always ask me what they think the appropriate time to wear start wearing makeup is. I don't think that there's a specific time. I think that it's whenever you feel ready and when your parents say you can. My parents actually allowed me to start wearing makeup in 7th grade. My mom was like, okay, you can start wearing makeup because I wanted to in 6th grade. Obviously, I wasn't very good at makeup. Um, I didn't really know what I was doing. I just kind of like watched YouTube tutorials and kind of guessed and bought random products. And that's how a lot of people start off as and that's completely normal and you have to practice and practice and figure out what products work right for you and which ones don't. And eventually, here I am now. Five years later, I'm 16 and I've had about five years of makeup experience. I've played around with it. I've figured out what works for me, what looks good on my face and everything. So I wanted to share what I have with some people that might not be as like experienced or just starting out that might like want some tips and tricks. Okay, so before we get into the tutorial, I just wanted to recommend some products. If you're a complete beginner, like you have no makeup experience like at all, and you just don't even know where to start. The products I recommend to start out with is one good coverage concealer. It's really important, especially when you're starting to wear makeup. If you have perfect skin, don't even don't even wear face makeup. And then the second product is a good setting powder. Powder can be really, really good because it can give you a little bit more coverage, like the one I have here I showed in the tutorial, the L'Oreal True Match. It's really good because it has, it like mattifies your skin. It also gives you a little bit of coverage on top of your BB cream or foundation or whatever. The third one is a mascara and this is so, so, so important. Mascara just opens your eyes so much if you apply it right, if you apply it enough amount and everything. It just, it completes everything. I definitely recommend the CoverGirl Clump Crusher. It's around $9 at Target. Really affordable, it's like 10 bucks. It's amazing, it's lengthening, separating. The fourth product is eyebrow gel. And eyebrow gel is really good even if you don't have like even if you don't fill in your eyebrows at all and you just want to groom them a little bit and you don't want to get them threaded or anything, get eyebrow gel because you can like really comb the hairs into place depending on what your eyebrows look like. And then the fifth product is a good lip balm just to moisturize your lips on an everyday basis. Also before the video started I want to talk about brushes because I think that brushes are really a really important part of applying makeup. Basically, you can get brushes basically anywhere. I got my brushes from a bunch of different places. These are NYX brushes. Something that's really important is a good blending sponge for your foundation, concealer, everything. Um, this is the Real Technique sponge. And it's like six bucks at Ulta. I think I said this in the video. So brushes are really are an important part. You want to use the right like fluffy for blending. Make sure to get a really good blending brush. So that's all I wanted to talk about. I just it's like kind of a mixed video, like a little Q and A and like a whole makeup tutorial. This video is gonna be long because I talk through the entire thing. So I hope you guys enjoy. I'm gonna stop talking now. But if you enjoy this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up as usual. And if you found this video helpful, maybe 
share it with a friend or someone that might find use in this as well. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please click that subscribe button. It just shows your support. Thank you guys so much for 80,000 subscribers. That's like so close to 100,000. I can't believe it. Uh, it feels like yesterday I just hit 30,000. I love you guys so much and please enjoy this video. Okay, so before I get any comments, yes, my ears stick out and I can't do anything about that. So, okay, so face makeup really isn't necessary in wearing makeup. If you really want to and if you have acne, if you need more coverage, then definitely I would suggest foundation. And I didn't really start wearing foundation until I was 15. I think I was a freshman in high school. I was like in the middle of the year and, and that's when I started wearing foundation. But before that I usually just spot treated kind of like my under eye circles and any blemishes that I have like under my eyes and stuff like that. So if you don't want to wear foundation then you don't have to. Um, this is just kind of my personal opinion. My favorite drugstore foundation is the CoverGirl Outlast Stay Fabulous foundation and this is a 3-in-1 foundation. It says lasting power of primer coverage of a concealer and blendability of a foundation in one shine free. And I would definitely recommend this. I really really like this foundation. It's, it's really good. It's super blendable. All the products will be in the description by the way. So if you want a little bit more coverage and just using concealer and not as much heaviness or the look of foundation then I would suggest a BB cream and this is the one from Maybelline it's a dream pure BB cream so um, this is the one I'm gonna be using this is really really good I definitely recommend this so basically you apply BB cream usually I just put it on the back of my hand like this basically you can either like apply it with your finger like just like that using your fingers is just as well as using brushes it doesn't really matter what you use to apply this on your face but I wouldn't recommend using I mean you can you can blend it out with your fingers if you want to but oh got that on my eyebrow so like I said you can use your finger but you can also use a foundation brush to pa paint it on and I think that just this just like I don't know it helps you blend as much like it's so the product is a little bit more evened out than if you just use your fingers <laughs> a little light but that's just because my forehead is like a million times darker than my whole face so now the BB cream is all painted on and obviously it's not blended at all and that's why we have a sponge and this is the real technique sponge you can get it at Ulta I think and this is like five bucks um, but yeah so I actually like to use a dry just because I have oily skin and this BB cream is like kind of oily and I like my skin you know more matte so I'm just gonna be blending in padding motions like this <laughs> And this just presses the product into your skin. You do not need to buy this sponge, but it is only five bucks, and that's a really good deal. Five or six, I don't remember. Yeah, so just make sure to blend everything really well. Pat it into your skin like that so that it like soaks it up and your pores look more, I don't know, like, I don't know, your face just looks better when you do this. And for the forehead, I like swipe it because if there's too much product on the forehead, it just looks weird on me, so. Make sure to blend it kind of on your ears too with any foundation or BB cream. Okay, so that is the BB cream and see how like oily my skin looks? I don't really like that that much so that's why we have powder and concealer. And concealer really gives that extra coverage. You can use a light concealer. This one I bought is like way too light for me, but this is the Maybelline Age Rewind Concealer. I would really like this. You can definitely build it up. You can use this alone. You can use it on top of a BB cream or foundation. It doesn't really matter. But yeah, this is what I do. So we're just going to apply it kind of under our eyes where... We need a little bit of highlight and we want our eyes to look brighter. This, like I said, is way too late for me, but it blends pretty well and the powder I have makes it not as dramatic. Also, I'm going to highlight at the bottom right here and also right there. Wow, that's really cute. So then I'm just going to take the Real Technique sponge again and just blend that out using pressing motions at the bottom especially and then you just can kind of like do whatever so as you can see it looks very light under my eyes some people like the look of that um, I honestly don't look like the look of this especially not without like contour and everything find concealer not as light as this but you know that's basically what I do I kind of do it all the way down like in a triangle 
kind of thing just to lift up my eyes. I always like to have a dense brush to blend out my face makeup even more. This just like kind of mattifies everything I guess. Not mattifies but it just blends it even more so if there's like too much product it'll get some of it off or like distribute it a little bit more. I had to choose two products to use for the rest of my life. It would be mascara, which I'll explain later, and powder. And this is the powder I use. It's the L'Oreal True Match Super Blendable Powder, and I am in the shade N5. And I really like this because it balances out my whole face. I talked about brushes in the beginning, but uh, brushes are really important, so I'm just going to use this fluffy kind of brush to, like, really, I don't know, give my face just makeup on it. Yep. Just get some from the thing and then tap, I always tap it off because I don't want like super cakey. Start at my eyes because that's the most oily part for some reason. I don't know why but that's just how it goes. And we're just going to go all the way over the face. I have like mascara from earlier. So I don't know if you can see a difference but this is the side with powder and this is the side without. Okay, so after powder, your face is nice and flawless, a little bit more matte, but this BB cream specifically leaves my face a little more dewy, and like if you like that look, that's fine. I actually, that's why I use foundation more often, because, I don't know, it just gives like a more flawless matte, and I like that personally, but this definitely gives you more dewy, natural skin finish. So a lot of people ask me about like bronzer and contouring and stuff, and honestly, that comes with practice and watching tutorials and just figuring it out for yourself, but I can help with the bronzer part. Honestly, contouring is like a whole different thing. It takes like patience and whatever, but bronzing is different than contouring personally. It's kind of the same thing, you know, basically the same concept, but um, for bronzer, um, we're just gonna use the powder kind. We're just gonna like focus on adding warmth to the face instead of like super defined like highlighted everything you know highlighting contour so basically you're just gonna take it tap off the brush this is an angled brush so you can like figure out where your cheekbones and everything are so the way to find where to contour or bronze or whatever is to find your cheekbones so basically just suck in your cheeks like this and so you can see those lines right there is where you're gonna put the bronzer so just suck in your cheeks and then just put the bronzer right there in kind of a circular back and forth motion like this. And like I said, this is just bronzer, like I'm just doing it messily, whatever, on the forehead because my forehead's always dark, so gotta make it look, you know, like it always does. So make sure to blend it really well. It's kind of like eyeshadow, you really need to blend it out for it to look good. So if you want more defined contour or bronzer like how I do, you can just grab your foundation brush if you had extra product on it. You don't have to do this, but this is what I like to do. And I just like to define a little bit right under it. So it's like sharper and then yeah, and that's this side. Okay, so this looks like funny right now, but like I promise it's not this bad. With contour and bronzer and stuff, you have like if you're light, then don't use a super, super dark orangey color because it'll look super unnatural. If you're orange like me already, then you can use orange because it's the same thing. It's just a little bit darker and adds more warmth like this, as you can see. If you want to, you can also add a little bit more powder just to kind of blend everything together more, I guess. I like to add it because I feel like it takes away the harshness of the bronzer. That is bronzer. So next is eyebrows, and eyebrows definitely are super important. You guys know that I fill my eyebrows, and you can definitely tell a difference because, well, they're way better than they used to be, but they're still pretty thin. Okay, so these are my eyebrows. Naturally, they're just, you know, eyebrows. So basically, um, I just brush them out with a spoolie, and you can get a spoolie literally anywhere. They're really cheap. So eyebrows are so important, and sorry I can't see me talk, but eyebrows are just so important. If you have naturally thick eyebrows that are like messy at the bottom and you have like a lot of hair everywhere and like whatever, go ask your parents, ask your mom, ask your dad, ask your aunt, whatever. Ask them if you can go get them done. I actually 
have only gotten my eyebrows threaded once because my hair, like I don't have thick eyebrows, my hair doesn't grow back. I just tweeze the ones at the bottom to keep my arch. But I did like threading, I really liked how they came out. My sister gets hers threaded and she has really thick, dark eyebrows and she really does not need to fill them in at all. She just gets them done so they're nice and cleaned up and they are on point by themselves without makeup. So if you're blessed like that, take advantage of them, go get them cleaned up, they will look amazing, trust me. If necessary, like for me, so basically, I'm using this Billion Dollar Brows Mad About Brows palette, and this is actually $30, but you don't have to buy this specific thing. Honestly, any eyeshadow or powder type thing that you find, I just use a mixture of this color, taupe, and um, raven. If you don't, honestly, eyebrow gel is the way to go. Just comb. I'll show that after, but eyebrow gel makes them look so much more put together and just great, so... Yeah. I'm just going to fill in my eyebrows really quick. I have a routine up on that, which is a little bit different than this. Over here at the tail, and I just draw a line down to like where I want it to end. And a good way when you're filling in your eyebrows to figure out where your eyebrows should end is just to use a pencil or a brush and just figure out like where the lineup is. And like mine should end around maybe a little bit longer than how I have them, so I'm gonna do that. Go with your natural shape of, my, of your eyebrows. So then I just fill in the rest of the arch, like all the way here. So now that we've got the tail, basically we're gonna go to the front. I leave the front for last just because if you fill it in like a square, don't do that, just don't do that, trust me. I just make a line at the bottom, line at the top, and then I blend it out with the spoolie. So now we're just going to blend it out with the spoolie. This is just with powder and they can still be on fleek and it's way easier because you can um, like use a q-tip and erase if you messed up. But see this little thing, I usually like to fill it in with a darker thing like a thicker pomade, like the Anastasia pomade, which is only 18 bucks. That's pretty good for a really high quality product. I'm going to do that really quick, but you don't have to. I'm just going to do that just so I'm not lying and saying that that's just what my eyebrows are like. The most important part, I use the e.l.f. eyebrow gel and this is only up, I think, $2 at Target. So it's really affordable and we're going to comb the hairs first from the outside and we're just going to comb it in the shape and in the front we're going to brush it up like this and then down on the top. Honestly, eyebrow gel can really make a difference. They can make your eyebrows look so much more groomed and just nice and put together. So yeah, that's eyebrows. Now let's move on to eyeshadow. Using a good primer is super, super, super important because this is what makes the eyeshadow stay, last long, and just be more vibrant. The one I use is the NYX eyeshadow base, and it just looks like this. Um, another really good one is the e.l.f. eye lid primer, and it's only like $2, I think, at Target. So I'm just going to use this on like this to warm it up, and then I'm just going to apply it on my lid. The primer is super, super important, so I'm just going to cover the entire lid and then like also add on the crease and then just blend it. So I cannot stress this enough, but blending is the key to eyeshadow. To having good eyeshadow, just blend your eyeshadow. Like it doesn't even matter what it is, just blend it. Honestly, I definitely recommend the Naked Basics palette. It's $28, but it is so worth it. I've had this for two years. If you know what the original one looks like, like this is destroyed. I have had this for so long and I am absolutely in love with it. This is the best eyeshadow palette ever. This eyeshadow palette is so versatile and you can use it for so many different things. I used Crave to fill in my eyebrows a, lot, a while ago. Um, if you watch my, some of my old videos on here, then you might see that, but as you can see, I definitely made a dent in all of these colors. Um, and I'm gonna show you how to use this palette. If you don't have the money, um, you can just use similar colors to what I'm doing, but I would definitely recommend the Naked Basics palette. Not the Naked 2 Basics as much, but the original Naked Basics palette for eyeshadow. It has all your neutral colors, they're all matte, one kind of shimmer. That's perfect for inner corner highlight, and I'll show you how to do everything with this palette. And it's not like just for this, but 
I would definitely recommend this palette like 100% so I'm just using this blending brush to grab this light eyeshadow and also I like naked from the naked one palette this is called naked 2 and it's just a really light kind of brownish gray color and it's really great for the transition shade just everywhere on your crease like this so basically what you're gonna do is just take your brush and go back and forth in windshield wiper motions kind of above the crease like this so honestly just this light brown color gives my eyes so much more dimension and it just adds really nice definition and this is a great palette I just keep saying that um, if you have any lightish brown color that will work make sure to build it up though because if it's if like you can't even see it then there's no point in even putting it on and blending is the key to everything now that that's done we're going to add faint from this palette or you can just use any dark brown And when you have a good transition shade, then the, the main shade goes on so much smoother. Honestly, I just love how it turns out. But you just basically keep blending everything out until it's all nice and fused together. Just keep blending, add more product if you want, and just keep blending all that out. And I think I had le leftover residue on my brush, that's why it looks like black instead of brown like I applied. So that is basically the technique of putting on crease shades. I'm not sure why it turned out like this, but uh, we're gonna keep going. So for a nice highlighted look, we're gonna add Foxy. I use Walk of Shame, but I'm almost out, so I don't wanna waste it, but we're gonna use Foxy and mix with Walk of Shame a little bit on the lid. And this just really adds, like I love the matte look. So we're just gonna add that on the lid like this. And since these are matte, like kind of lighter shades they're not going to show up as well but like that's okay and you can also add it on top of the brown just to kind of tone that down a little bit so yeah and then we're just going to blend a little bit more on the top like this it puts together the whole eyeshadow look you can leave it like this or just add it in the kind of to the half so now i finished the other eye and this is what it looks like um this actually turned out to be darker than i wanted to do i originally wanted to do kind of a more natural look but um, yeah, so I hope you guys got the kind of basic technique of what I did after the matte eyeshadow I like to add some shimmer in the inner corner and on my brow bone So I'm just using Venus from the Naked Basics palette and I'm just going to be Applying this in the inner corner and just patting using the brush and squinting and just patting it right in the inner part and then bringing it up a little bit So um, yeah, that is the eyeshadow and for the top and I love adding some dark eyeshadow on the lower lash line because it really ties the whole eyeshadow look together and I'm just gonna apply this under my on my lower lash line like this for me personally I like more definition on the lower lash line so yeah and it just kind of ties everything together as you can kind of see we're just gonna add a little bit of Venus on the brow bone as well often, often, girl, I do this often. Okay, so that is the completed eyeshadow, and now let's move on to eyeliner. So for eyeliner, you have to go watch my winged eyeliner tutorial on how to do this. Click the link down below or right here somewhere. I personally like to add some pencil eyeliner just on the bottom lash line. I sometimes like to align my waterline, but since I don't really feel like doing that today because my eyes are already irritated, I'm just going to line the lower lash line. And this is the NYX Slide On, Glide On, Stay On, and Definitely a Turn On Waterproof Extreme Shine Eyeliner. So, yeah. Um, it's drugstore. It's NYX. And I think it was around 6 or $7. I really like this eyeliner. So I'm just going to line my lash line like this. And basically... I just kind of do it lightly. So if one of them kind of was darker than the other, I just kind of fix it. So the easiest way to fix this personally is just to use this pencil brush like I use for the crease and everything and just to blend that out. We already put eyeshadow on the lower lash line, but it just really helps to blend everything together and it just gives it a way nicer. Ooh, I, and now the final step, mascara. Like Honestly, mascara is the best 
a thing ever. If you wear it by itself, your eyes just look so much more vibrant and awake and amazing. No makeup look is complete without mascara. This, if I just wore this, it would look dumb. Like, it just doesn't look right. What's missing? Eyelashes, you know? So, mascara is super important if that's, like, if you don't want to wear any of this makeup and just mascara, trust me. The thing with mascara is that people, I think, think that you only have to put a little bit on and then it looks fine. But honestly, it's all about building it up and getting it dark and long and everything. I actually don't have my favorite mascara with me, the CoverGirl Clump Crusher, but you guys have seen me use that in other tutorials, and that is my all-time favorite mascara of all time, forever and ever. But my second favorite mascara is the Falsies from Maybelline, and I love this also. I do the bottom eyelashes first. I don't know why. I just It's a habit. And see how much like see how much better that looks than this side. Obviously, we have to balance it out. And if you don't like the clumpy look, then this mascara is I don't think for you because it it makes your eyelashes really thick. I really like the clump crusher though. If you like long separated lashes, that mascara is the all time best. I don't have it with me because my sister took it. So you just want to curl your eyelashes before you apply the mascara lightly. What this does is just like gives the mascara something to hold on to, or curl, I guess, and it makes them longer and everything. I'm pretty sure people know how to curl their eyelashes. So we're just gonna apply it like this. So some people literally just do this, like they just do that, and then it looks like this. And you can't see the mascara, right? I just go all the way up and I blink because it helps distribute the product evenly across my eyelashes. Just blink, blink, blink whenever I move the wand upward. And then also to get on the tops of my eyelashes, I just like go like that at the top of my eyelashes. So like I said, since I don't have my favorite mascara with me, it looks a little bit more clumpy than I would like it. But that is basically how I do my mascara. I do add the clump crusher, which definitely lengthens them and separates them. See the difference? Like, see what's missing on this eye? So I'm just going to do the other eye really quick. I'll be right back. Okay, so this is actually the finished look. So thank you guys so much for watching. That was it. I hope you guys found use in this. I hope that you can figure something out that you got at least some tips and tricks on kind of what I think and just some drugstore products and some techniques and whatever. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video again, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and leave any comments down below. Anything, I will reply to some of them. And if you're not already subscribed, like I said, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Love you guys so much. Bye.